Hello and welcome to Indus News live from Islamabad. I am Anib Hamid with the news of this hour. Let's begin with the top stories first. Pakistan has condemned spiteful statements from some spoilers in the Afghan government. National Security Advisor Moeed Yusuf says these officials in Kabul are constantly attempting to harm bilateral ties. In a series of tweets, he said Pakistan will not let a handful of venomous minds affect Islamabad's support to Afghans for peace. The U.S. military says the Taliban have gained strategic momentum in Afghanistan as they now control half the countryside. U.S. Top General Mark Miley says the group has captured 200 districts and encircled 17 provincial capitals. Talking to reporters, he said the fighting between Afghan forces and the Taliban is expected to escalate in the coming weeks. Russia has rejected some aspects of a deal between the United States and Germany on the Nord Stream 2 gas pipeline. Kremlin spokesman Dmitry Peskov said Russia had never used energy as a tool of political pressure. Under the deal, the US and Germany agreed to imposing sanctions on Russia if it uses project as a weapon against Europe. China says it is against politicizing the matter of COVID-19 origins and will not follow the World Health Organization's plan on the study. Meanwhile, Brazil has recorded over 1,400 daily deaths from the virus and more than 54,000 new cases. In Pakistan, 40 people have died while over 2,100 tested positive in the past 24 hours. Globally, the virus has claimed more than 4 million lives and infected over 191 million people. Well, these are the top stories. News in detail after a short break. Stay tuned. Welcome back. Now let's have the news in detail. Start from Pakistan, which has condemned spiteful statements from some spoilers in the Afghan government. National Security Advisor Malid Yusuf says these officials in Kabul are constantly attempting to harm the bilateral ties. In a series of tweets, he said such officials aim to deflect attention from their own failures. He said Pakistan will not let a handful of venomous minds affect Islamabad's support to Afghan peace. Yusuf reiterated that Pakistan remains committed to facilitating an inclusive political settlement in Afghanistan. Now, the U.S. military says the Taliban have gained strategic momentum in Afghanistan as they now control half the countryside. U.S. Top General Mark Milley says the group has captured 200 out of the 419 districts and encircled 17 provincial capitals. Talking to reporters, the, he said the fighting between Afghan forces and the Taliban is expected to escalate in the coming weeks. Miley said there is a possibility of a negotiated outcome as well as of Taliban takeover. The top U.S. general said the situation is a test of the will of the Afghan leadership, the security forces and the people. He reiterated Washington's resolve to continue its support to the Afghan government and the security forces. Meanwhile, the Taliban claimed to have captured strategic Marja district in Helmand province. In a tweet, the spokesperson said the group also seized large number of weapons and vehicles. Now, Russia has rejected some statements in a deal between the United States and Germany on the Nord Stream 2 gas pipeline. Kremlin spokesman Dmitry Peskov said Russia had never used energy as a tool of political pressure. The 1,230-kilometer pipeline under the Baltic Sea will double Russian gas exports to Germany. Under the deal, the U.S. and Germany agreed to imposing sanctions on Russia if it uses the project as a weapon against Europe. The pact will also make sure that Ukraine continues to receive transit fees once Nord Stream 2 becomes operational. 
The current transit deal between Russia and Ukraine ends in 2024. Moving on now, Syria says its air defenses have intercepted an Israeli attack on the Al Qusair area in the western Homs province. State media quoted the military as saying they shot down most of the missiles. It said the strikes caused no casualties but only material damage. The Israeli military said it had no comment on the incident. This comes days after Damascus's air defenses intercepted a barrage of Israeli missiles over Al Safira in southern Aleppo. Indian farmers are starting a sit-in near Parliament in the capital, New Delhi. The growers aim to renew pressure on the government to repeal three contentious agriculture laws. Farmers leaders said 200 protesters will gather at a large Mughal era observatory in central New Delhi every day. He said the farmers will remind the government of their long pending demands. India's monsoon session of Parliament began this week and will end in early August. Farmers said they will hold their own parliament at the observatory throughout the monsoon session. Tens of thousands of farmers took the highways leading to New Delhi for more than seven months. Now in Pakistan, the coronavirus has claimed 40 more lives in the last 24 hours, while the death toll nears 23,000. The health ministry says more than 2,100 people tested positive overnight. It said the case load has crossed 998,000, of which nearly 923,000 have recovered. The ministry said there are more than 52,000 active cases, and nearly 2,500 are critical. It said more than 24 million doses of the COVID-19 vaccine have been administered so far, and over 6.8 million people have been fully vaccinated. China says it is against politicizing the matter of COVID-19 origins and will not follow the World Health Organization plan on the study. Meanwhile, Brazil has recorded over 1,400 daily deaths from the virus and more than 54,000 new cases. Globally, the virus has claimed more than 4 million lives and infected over 191 million people. More details about the pandemic in this report. The COVID-19 cases have nearly tripled in the U.S. over the last two weeks amid an onslaught of vaccine misinformation. U.S. President Joe Biden expressed pointed frustration over the slowing COVID-19 vaccination rate in the country. He pleaded that it is gigantically important for Americans to step up and get inoculated against the virus as it surges once again. Meanwhile, YouTube has removed videos from Brazilian President Jair Bolsonaro's channel for spreading misinformation about the coronavirus. Over in Australia, daily cases have spiked again despite a weeks-long lockdown, while authorities warned that infections would rise more. And we can't stress enough how contagious, it's cruel the way this virus is contagious. Any human contact means you can pick up the virus or give the virus. It is spreading like we've never seen before. And I especially want to thank our contact tracers because if it was not for their efforts, the 124 case numbers today would literally have been in their thousands. And I don't say that lightly. South Korea has also reported its highest every daily increase in coronavirus cases. Meanwhile, Tokyo 2020 organizers say two more athletes residing in the Olympic Village tested positive for COVID-19. The situation in Europe is not so different as well. Government figures show the number of COVID-19 patients admitted to hospital in England has reached its highest level for nearly five months. While in Greece, protesters and police clashed outside Athens Parliament during a rally against vaccinations. In France, the public as well as the opposition continue to protest against the implementation of the health pass and compulsory vaccinations. We need other things than a monarch who from his Elise palace gives orders to his subjects who in 10 minutes goes back on his promises of the previous day. Instead of targeting, you are showering people with vaccines, even the children, teenagers who have no interest in being vaccinated. Instead, you set up social constraints. Everyone tracks everyone, everywhere in restaurants, cafes, commercial centers, movie theaters, but you restrain freedoms. Tunisia's Prime Minister Hichi Muchechi admitted that the government's response to the pandemic has been criminal. Meanwhile, Saudi Arabia has announced to ban all direct or indirect travel by citizens to Indonesia over concerns about the outbreak there. 
Now, in the United States, health officials say life expectancy has declined by one and a half year during 2020. This is the largest annual decline since World War II. Center for Disease Control and Prevention figures show an average lifespan dropped last year to 77.3 years from 78.8. The COVID-19 pandemic and drug overdoses pushed life expectancy down. More than 3.3 million Americans died last year, far more than any other year in U.S. history. The data comes amid a resurgence of COVID-19 cases, with daily deaths now almost 50% higher than last week. More than 600,000 Americans have died so far during the pandemic. India is investigating its first documented human death from bird flu. The health ministry says an 11-year-old boy succumbed to the disease earlier this month. The ministry said the boy was admitted to New Delhi's hospital on the 2nd of July and died on 12th after a multi-organ failure. It said health workers who treated the patient and the boy's family have been kept in isolation. The authorities have not found any suspected case of bird flu in Boy's home state, Haryana. However, genome sequencing and contact tracing have been launched. The death from the bird flu virus highlights a potential new risk for the world's second most populous nation battling COVID pandemic. At least 17 Bengali migrants have drowned in a shipwreck off Tunisia as they try to cross the Mediterranean to Italy. Tunisian Red Crescent said the boat had set off from Zuvara on Libya's northwest coast. It said the ship was carrying migrants from Syria, Egypt, Sudan, Eritrea, Mali and Bangladesh. The humanitarian, or I beg your pardon, the humanitarian origination added more than 380 People were rescued by the Tunisian Coast Guard. Recently, several migrants have drowned in the Mediterranean as improved weather increased the attempted crossings to Europe. The death toll from floods in central China has risen to 33 after torrential rains drenched in Anan province. Authorities say more than 3 million people across the region have been affected. Tens of thousands of people are being evacuated as the severe weather spread northwards. According to officials, rainwater has damaged more than 215,000 hectares of cropland. They noted it has caused a direct economic loss of about $189 million so far. Authorities raised the storm alert for four cities to the highest tire of the weather warning system. Meanwhile, in neighboring Hebei province, two people were killed after a tornado struck the city of Baoding. Morning is coming up after a short break. Stay with us. Welcome back now. China says it rejects the U.S. backing for Australia in its trade disputes with Beijing. Foreign Ministry spokesperson Chao Li Shen was addressing a regular press briefing in Beijing. Chao asked Washington to correct its mistakes instead of making baseless comments. He said Canberra's interference in China's internal affairs caused tensions in the bilateral relations. Earlier, U.S. Trade Representative Catherine Tai said Washington is closely monitoring trade tensions between Australia and China. Talking to her Australian counterpart, Tai said the U.S. will support Canberra in arresting China's state-led non-market practices. Now, the EU has ruled out the renegotiations of the Brexit deal on the Northern Ireland Protocol as demanded by the U.K. European Union Commission's Vice President Myra Sevovich said protocol cannot be redrawn. He said respecting international legal obligations is of a paramount importance. Earlier, London demanded Brussels to agree on rewriting a deal overseeing problematic trade involving Northern Ireland. Britain said the country's protocol was flawed at conception. The protocol requires checks on goods between the British mainland and Northern Ireland, which remains part of the EU customs area. Moving on now, Saudi Aramco has confirmed that some of its data was leaked after hackers reportedly demanded ransom from the oil producer. Saudi Arabia's oil major said the company's data was held by third-party contractors. It said the release of data was not due to a system breach and has no impact on operations. The oil producer said it continues to maintain a robust cybersecurity posture. 
This comes amid reports that one terabyte of Aramco's data had been held by an extortionist. The state-owned driller was offered a chance to have the data deleted for $50 million in cryptocurrency. Belarusian President Alexander Lukashenko says the U.S. along with its European allies is behind the provocations against Minsk. In an interview, he accused the intelligence services of executing the agenda formulated by Western politicians. Referring to the attempted coup and his assassination, Lukashenko noted it was only possible under sanctions on the country's top leadership. The president also took aim at Germany for what he called management of terrorists acting in Belarus. He underscored that the West, led by Washington, will not allow Belarus to be a sovereign state. However, Minsk will defend its right to independently define its policies. Now, a Hong Kong court has sentenced seven people for their role in an attack on pro-democracy protesters during the 2019 unrest. This is the first conviction against any of over 100 white-shirted attackers who resorted to violence. Judge Eddie Yip described the crimes as the mob justice, which caused panic among the general public. The court found five people guilty of rioting and wounding with intent and handed them a seven-year jail. Meanwhile, two others received a sentence of four years and eight months. A Russian court fined U.S. social media giant Facebook and messaging app Telegram for failing to delete what it says a illegal content. The court slapped Facebook with a fine of over 81,000 U.S. dollars, while Telegram faces a penalty of nearly $150,000. Moscow has taken steps in recent months to regulate the power of social media. It has also told foreign firms to open offices in Russia and store the personal data of its citizens on its territory. A Russian court is expected later to rule on two similar accusations against Twitter. On the eve of the Tokyo Games, organizers have fired the director of the opening ceremony of a joke he made about the Holocaust. This comes after footage of Kentaro Kobayashi emerged from the 1990s in which he made the joke as part of his comedy act. Japan's Olympic chief Seiko Hashimoto said the video re-ridiculed painful facts of history. Kobayashi apologized for his past comments in a statement. The dismissal is the latest in a string of scandals to hit the games. Earlier, a composer quit after it emerged he had bullied classmates with disabilities at school. The head of the Tokyo 2020 organizing committee had also resigned over sexist remarks he made. Tokyo Olympics creative had followed after his derogatory comments about a popular Japanese female entertainer. Now in Pakistan, authorities have stopped an operation to rescue a private cargo vessel which got stuck off Karachi coast. Authorities say the operation has been called off due to bad weather. The vessel, Hang Tong, belongs to a Hong Kong-based shipping company. It lost anchors and started drifting towards shallow waters after offloading at the Karachi port. The vessel later got stuck due to high sea waves and faulty engine. Russia has successfully launched its largest space module to the International Space Station. It is scheduled to dock with the Zvezda module at the ISS on the 29th of July. A Proton M carrier rocket carrying the module blasted off from the Cosmodrome Baikonur in Kazakhstan. The module, dubbed NOKA, will provide the astronauts with additional storage space and technical equipment. It also supplies an ERA manipulator which will allow astronauts to avoid some of the open space missions. European stocks are trading higher, reflecting positive global momentum after a dull start of the week. Investors await the latest monetary policy announcement from the European Central Bank later today. Frankfurt's DAX is leading the gains, rising more than three quarters of a percent. FTSE MIP in Italy and the Pan-European Stock 600 climbed more than half a percent each. CAC 40 in Paris also advanced half a percent. London's FTSE edged up marginally. 
And with that, we come to the end of this news bulletin. For the latest updates, you can follow us on social media at Indus.news.